Okay, have you been in this situation? You are in a match and everyone has picked their heroes. You're the only one left, and guess what? No one went healer. So you want to win and know that at least one strong healer is required. You do the neighborly thing and run primary heals. About mid-match you get frustrated at your DPS and or tanks because they're making crucial obvious mistakes and you know you could do a better job. So you just say, screw it and switch from heals because you figure, well, your team is basically dead weight anyways, so not having a healer won't make much of a difference. We need to secure more elims, and you know exactly how to do that. Maybe I'm the only one feeling this way, but I doubt it because I notice it in my games constantly, and I'm not the one doing the switching. We have this idea that healers can't really impact the game enough to secure a win. I mean, we all know we need healers, but then why don't we see DPS players getting frustrated and switching to heals? It's likely the other way around, right? So my goal here in this video is to encourage players to not only want to run support over a more flashy role like DPS, but actually feel like the game was won because of their awesome support play, despite having teammates that aren't that great at their roles. I couldn't do it alone though, because I am not a support main. So I reached out to a top GM support main by the name of V Majoris. He's actually number 31 support in competitive at the time of this video. He plays on PlayStation, but if you're from PC, I wouldn't worry. We're going to go over concepts of carrying with support. Not about the mechanical parts where that's really the main difference between the platforms. So I asked him a simple question. How do you carry as a support when your tanks and or DPS are not that great? Many healers gauge how well they are doing based on how much healing they do. If you have gold heals at 10,000, then you're doing your job, right? Well, kinda. See, that's only half the equation. The other part is, are you maximizing the effectiveness of your abilities? He says it's no use making sure your team stays alive longer if they play like quote unquote potatoes. But the support aspect of your kit can truly make an impact on a fight because you are in control of that. See, it's getting key sleep darts, discording the correct enemy at any given moment, and using sound barrier at the perfect time that increase your overall impact on a match and can enable you to almost carry with the support. So the next time you think you're doing good because you have gold heals and your team is still doing badly, double check to make sure you're doing everything you possibly can with your abilities, positioning, etc. He says he wants support mains to also get a reality check of sorts. Because it's easy to think you're the only one doing work on the team and blaming your team. He says you should look at yourself as a support player first before pointing the finger. And I can agree with this for sure. One of the things I asked was how do you know which support to use and when? He says that he usually knows in the first minute of a match whether he has to switch or not. It depends on if your team is willing to peel for you, and if the enemy has flankers or not. Sure, Zen can be a great carry, but if your team isn't peeling for you and the enemy has a Genji and Tracer always on you, then it's best to just switch rather than try to outplay them. So we then talked about some tips for each support to help carry games. We both agree on our hatred for Mercy in this current meta, unfortunately, but with Mercy, it's really straightforward. Just make sure to not keep a healing beam on a full Reinhardt without looking around at your teammates. Oh, and don't stand still. As a Lucio main, he actually says he prefers to use the healing aura more often even when Amp It Up isn't off cooldown. I was shocked because everyone knows DSP Stanky mostly stays on speed boost. And to that, V Majoris says he doesn't agree with that. It may be less flashy, but using heals more often and only reserving speed boost for a key push will lend you more sound barriers and can even give a tiny bit of health to a teammate and potentially save them. And also try not to wall ride all crazy because you want to land a kill. It's a huge waste and you aren't getting the heals you could be getting and you get less sound barriers as a result. On to Zenyatta. V Majoris told me he actually climbed all the way up to GM on his smurf just playing Zen and didn't talk with his team. He says it's really important to discord what your team is already attacking and not necessarily whatever you're attacking. I'm going to add in there that you should get into the habit of leaving a discord on an enemy that your team is attacking, such as a Reinhardt, rather than constantly switching it, especially if it's a tiny diva or something. Moira is also pretty straightforward, but V Majora says that Moira players worry too much about DPSing. They really need to find that balance. I would like to add that if your healing meter is full, then your DPS should really only be used to secure elims on low health targets. I personally like to save the healing orb to help mitigate my healing costs so I don't run out. I mean that orb heals 300 total health at 75 heals per second. If you are able to bounce that back and forth on your Rhine for a few seconds, you don't even have to hit him with your healing beam. 
Oh, and stop throwing damage and healing orbs directly at your target. Take the time to bounce it between two walls near the target you want to hit with it, whether it be friend or foe. Ana is tricky since she's not meta right now and her skill requirement is the highest out of all the supports. If you do run her though and make your team happy they actually have an Ana compared to another support, then make sure you're getting the most out of your sleeps and anti-heals. Try to use the Bionade to land on both teammates and enemies to get the most out of the effects. Don't use Bionade on a teammate that is safe from harm. And don't use it on the enemy when it only lasts 4 seconds and your team is nowhere near them to follow up. And Symmetra, well, is Symmetra, what can I say? So that's my video on carrying as a support. Hope this helps. V Majoris doesn't have a YouTube or Twitch or anything that I can really plug, but if you have any questions for him, be sure to leave a comment below and I'll reach out to him. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to share, like, and subscribe to the channel. My name is Chit, and I approve this message.